You need you wide, bitches. And we back with another one. And today, it's that time of the year, man. It's the end of the year, so you know what that means. The end of the year album of the year list. We're gonna do the same thing that we did last year. We're gonna talk about my favorite EP of the year, then some of my favorite non-hip-hop albums, then we're gonna get into the top 25. So I'll put timestamps in the description so you can just click around and, you know, go to what you, what you came here for. Without further ado, man, there's, this video is gonna be mad long. So let's get right into this. My favorite EP of the year is This Thing of Ours, Volume 1. What can I say? The time that it came out was perfect. You know, you have great features from Earl Sweatshirt to Navy Blue to Pink Sifu, Maxo, Bodie James, Sideshow. You know, everything about it. Th this this EP just feels like I'm doing something right with my life. It's so it's so optimistic. It's so uplifting. It's so triumphant. It's so bright, especially the time it came out in the spring. Just everything about it, I love. Obviously, Nobles is my favorite track on here. Because that man, the way Navy Blue and Earl Sweatshirt were going back and forth on it, absolutely ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, top to bottom, this is just a great, great project. Alchemist is the hip-hop MVP of this year, and he has more albums that we're going to talk about that are on this list. Now let's get right into our uh, my favorite non-hip-hop albums of the year. I'll talk about them briefly. I'm not going to have, like, too much depth. First one I'd like to shout out is Hotels by Jasmine Sullivan. Dope, dope R&B uh, album. EP. It's labeled as an EP, but it, 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 it there's a lot of tracks on here, so I, I'd count it as, as an album. Next we have is Cavalcade by Black Midi. Uh, prog rock, art rock, whatever you want to call it. Dope, dope project. Black Midi is great. Uh, the first album was great. This one, I don't know. It probably tops it. I don't know. Uh, next one we have is Volcanic Bird Enemy and The Voice Concerned by Lil Ugly Mane. That man Travis, Lil Ugly Mane, one of the most creative artists out right now. Surprised with the direction he went with the more pop feel of this album. Very, very depressing album for what it is. It's definitely one of his strongest projects, in my opinion. Next we have is Silk Sonic with An Evening with Silk Sonic. This album definitely grew off me quite a bit. I can't even lie. You know, I do respect the aesthetic they went with celebrating 70s soul and R&B, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, Anderson Pack did his thing, you know, Bruno Mars did his thing. At worst, this is like the regular stuff you'd hear at Target at best. This is like very, very dope uh, and fun R&B music. So those are my non-hip-hop albums of the year in no order. Definitely wanted to shout those out, obviously. This is a hip-hop-centric channel. I will mostly be covering hip-hop, but I do want to, you know, state some of my favorite not hip hop stuff every once in a while. So, without further ado, you know, I was gonna have an honorable mentions for this, but to me, in a way, honorable mentions are like, I'm not gonna say they're stupid, but they are stupid. Saying, yeah, these albums are good, but not that good. So, it's kind of like a filler video that I, I could have done, but it's just like, nah, <laughs> nah. I bet people are just like, just cut to the chase. So that's what I'm gonna do. We're cutting to the chase, the top 25 hip hop albums of the year. At number 25, we have King's Disease 2 by Nas. Great project for Nas, whose career, you know, is definitely at the latter half of his career right now. And for him to drop something that is, like, actually, here's a hot take, actually one of his strongest albums, to me, in my opinion, showed some great maturity on this album, being that OG in the game. And, uh, you know, Hit Boy did his thing. Tracks like Store Run, Moments, Nobody, uh, Death Row East actually grew on me, though those tracks definitely were huge highlights. Um, at number four, we have something that came out pretty recently, actually like a week ago. 4NM by Chief Keef. This man, Chief Keef, proves that he is one of the funnest, you know, artists to listen to, and he ha he is still, you know, that guy. You know, tracks like Tuxedo and, you know, the opening track, Bitch Wear, like those highlights on here are some of, like, Chief Keef's strongest tracks in a while. This is his most focused album in a very long time. And, uh, I'm glad that he dropped this the time he did. Definitely did his thing on this one. At number 23, we have Tyron by Slow Tie. Yes, this album came out in February. We're all the way to the end of the year, and it's still on the top 25 for me. Slow Tie, you know, this album is definitely his most introspective album by far. Tracks like ADHD and Feel Away. I also like Maza with ASAP Rocky on here as well. You know, the potential for Slow Tie is limitless. 
and I can't wait to see where he's gonna go next. At number 22, Death and the Magician by Rome Streets and DJ Muggs. Uh, this was low-key a match made in heaven, to be honest. I did not expect them to drop something this good, but they did. Not saying DJ Muggs ha doesn't have classics, he does. But uh, Rome Streets, prior to this album, has definitely been kind of hit or miss for me. And uh, he delivered on here. This was dope. This was fire. Now, this album is your underground, grimy, East Coast hip-hop. And what it what it's going for, it does it very, very well, man. At number 21, we have I Lie Here Buried With My Rings and My Dresses by Backwash. This might turn off some people because this is definitely some industrial hip-hop stuff. This, this album is ridiculous. This is my intro to Backwash and oh my gosh, crazy, crazy. Um, it took me, uh, you know, if, uh, maybe a listen or two to actually, like, get into it. But once it clicked, it clicked. And this is easily one of the most creative projects of the year. Definitely, 100%. At number 20, we have Van Gogh's Left Ear by Z Loopers. This man, Z Loopers, is the most charismatic rapper in the game, I swear to God. From his f crazy flows to his crazy inflections. You, he could be rapping in so many different types of voices, you think there's, like, multiple rappers on a track. But, uh, yeah. This album, this trap album, Detroit Scam Rap-esque, is dope. Tracks like Battery, the title track, Each and Every Moment, Crazy, Hard. You know, there's a track with him and Danny Brown on a Crash Bandicoot beat. This is just an all-around fun album to listen to. Like, I just enjoyed it pretty much top to bottom. Z-Loopers is so engaging and these beats were hard, so. At number 19, we have Super Tecmo Bo by Boldy James and The Alchemist. What can I say, man? This man, Boldy James and Alchemist, they are the, the best rapper-producer duo in the game right now. And for throwaways of Bo Jackson, this is so damn good. Moth in the Flame, Bumps and Bruises, like, oh my gosh. 300 Fences, ridiculous. Yeah, this man Boldy is one of the best in the game, and we're not even done with these two yet, but for throwaways, for, for a deluxe turn to album, this is solid, this is dope. Love the aesthetic they went with the old, you know, Nintendo. I rock with this. This is dope. At number 18, we have A Martyr's Reward by Ka. Yes, I feel like if I listened to this album a little more during this year, I think it would be a little higher, but, you know, I just didn't really come back to it that much. Just more for the fact that I have to be in a certain mood to listen to Ka music. But uh, for what it is, you know, Martyr's Reward is a dope album. Kai yet again shows his consistency and show proves yet again that he's one of the best lyricists pretty much ever. Dope, dope, thought-provoking uh, music. At number 17, we have Half God by Wiki. This is easily his best album, produced fully by Navy Blue. This man, Wiki, you know... It was already a dope rapper beforehand, but he didn't have that thing that really fully clicked with me. And when he got Navy Blue on his side, it started to all fall into place. And this album is great. You have features from Mike, Earl Sweatshirt as well. Navy Blue went crazy on these beats. Great work. At number 16, we have Crashing Sound of How It Goes by Cities of V. Hopefully I pronounced that right. It's another abstract hip-hop album. I was not, you know, I never knew about cities beforehand but when i bumped this album oh my gosh i was definitely it hit like crazy this album is dope as hell just listen to the first few tracks and it's just like oh yeah this guy's got something you know after listening to this album i visited his past work but yeah this is definitely i enjoyed this i fuck with this heavy at number 15 we have hitler wears hair maze 8 by West Side Gun, specifically Side B, but if we connect it to, it's about the same spot where it would be anyway. Uh, you know, West Side Gun, the master curator, another great project from West Side Gun, and uh, I don't know, a lot of people think he's retiring after this album. I personally don't think he is, unless he's gonna be still doing the curating side, like, obviously then there's gonna be more of West Side. He's not gonna retire. He's not retiring. He's gonna end the Hitler series like he did right here, but he's not retiring. I don't think so. Great, great way to go out with this series, and I can't wait to see, you know, what other avenues he's gonna go in. Tracks like Hell on Earth Part 2, that's easily my favorite track on the album, but you also have tracks like Free Cutter, Richie's, Forest Lawn. Those tracks were dope, and, uh, yeah. Definitely the, Side B was definitely the stronger of the two, but both of them together, very deserving of this 15th spot to me, in my opinion. At number 14, we have Smiling With No Teeth by Genesis Owusu. This came on my radar 
randomly. I think I watched a Fantana review. I'm just like, all right, he, he says he's like Andre 3000 s You know, the, 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 the concept seems cool to me. So, you know, about the black dogs, which is basically depression. Uh, let, let me check this out. And man, for a debut album, this is great. This is really, really good. Now I can say the the concept is a little forced, I feel like, in some areas, but I feel like for the most part, this shows great, you know, potential for Genesis Owusu and, you know, the versatility right away is crazy. First track, you think you're going into a Death Grips album. <laughs> I thought literally this man was an MC ride copy, but then you get to tracks like Don't Need You and stuff and it's just like what is going on? This is definitely one of the more interesting projects of the year. The promise, you know, with this debut project and Genesis shows a huge potential. I can't wait to see where he's gonna go next. So yeah. At number 13 we have Pray for Haiti by Makami. Any anytime Makami and West Side Gun connect, it's just some lightning in the bottle. First it was HBO, then it was Don't Get Scared Now. Now we're here with Pray for Haiti. And yeah, what can I say, man? Makami had some crazy, crazy bars on here. That man, Mach, went dumb on here. And some dope-ass production, too. Many guys like Conductor Williams and Nicholas Craven. At number 12, we have Sound Ancestors by Madlib. What can I say about this man again? Madlib is literally the GOAT, bro. And the fact that he dropped this album, which feels like every Madlib album into one, it's so experimental, it's so eerie, you know, you get some instrumentals that are very reminiscent, that remind you of Doom, as well as Dilla, like this is literally everything into one. It's just a great project, man. Madlib, again, shows longevity and proves again why he's one of, if not the greatest, you know, hip-hop artist ever. Like, him and Dilla, literally, top two, all the way. <laughs> At number 11, we have The Color Blue by Blue, yeah. It's blue. <laughs> it's blue. I feel like it's kind of like another Ka thing where I feel like if I listened to this album more or bumped it way more than the albums above it, I feel like it would have been higher. But for what it is, this is fire. You get crazy production from guys like Exile, Sir Plus as well. And, uh, you know, Blue, is this album is so, you know, uplifting, and this is literally, literally Blue is one of those rappers where you can just get something good out of anything that he drops. Yeah, Blue proves it once again that he's one of the, one of the dopest rappers ever, man. And uh, this new peak of Blue, especially starting with Mile, I can't wait to see where he's gonna go next, man. Tracks like Because the Sky's Blue and, you know, Mr. Blue Sky and Blue World, like... The production is ridiculous, and that man, Blue, is just floating on all of them, man. He's going crazy. At number 10, we have Gumbo by Pink Sifu. Yes, this man, Pink Sifu, is the most versatile artist in rap. I don't know where, what direction he's going to go in next, but Gumbo right here, I definitely was not expecting this trap neo-soul album about family and unity. Yes, a uh, very, very relatable album, but hard it is bricks when it can be. You know, Pink Sifu, yet again, proves why he's one of the best in the game. And I can't wait to see where he, where he goes, you know. Uh, tracks like Living Proof and Call the Bro, as well as Rosco, Rosco, whatever you want to call it. Crazy, dope, fire, yeah. What, uh, all that. All that in one, you know what I'm saying? At number nine, we have Disco by Mike. This man, Mike, this man's discography is immaculate, and the fact that he added another, another immaculate project in his discography just proves that he is literally one of, if not the best, like, rappers in this abstract wave. You know, Disco is definitely his most weird album, to date to me at least that i can remember and definitely one of his best albums you know i think i would rate way of the world and may god bless your hustle above this but for what this is fire this is definitely fire tracks like evil eye and crystal ball are ridiculous this man this man mike is so consistent and he's going to drop every summer solstice and drop one of the best albums of the year like right away like i don't even have to listen to a mike album and just know that it's going to be one of the best albums of the year and it's going to make my top 10 every time I, th I think i've just come to that conclusion at number eight we have haram arm and hammer uh this is a match made in heaven i didn't know i needed this but i did you know alchemist got really weird with the beats billy woods and elucid prove yet again why one of the best 
you know, hip hop duos ever. The bars, you know, are very layered, like an onion, like I said in the review. They're so dense and have so much meaning that, you know, you will get something new every single time you listen to this. Al Alchemist created a crazy, crazy atmosphere for them to go off on. Right after Arm & Hammer, we have Bo Jackson by Bodie James and the Alchemist. Bodie James, I'm gonna say this right now, this man Bodie James, I, I might be jumping out the window to some people. I don't think it's a hot take. Actually, I think it might be mild. Bodie James is the modern day prodigy, 100%. Stop messing around. Like, come on, come on, especially with Alchemist on his side. Like, come on. Bo, Bo, Bo Jackson is ridiculous, and the fact that they dropped another album this year is just crazy, but Bo Jackson is that thing. The beats are ridiculous. Some of the instrumentals are so dark, but also so soulful. Bodie James is just barring you down, you know what I'm saying? And this is definitely his best project when it comes to straight bars. Obviously, Manger is better all around than this. Bo Jackson, phenomenal. I can't wait to see where they're going to go next. I, I loved it. You know, I still replay this to this day. So at number six, I want to say the top four through six, they're basically the same. You could just mix it any day you want to. But uh, for right now, at number six, this is how I'm feeling. Navy's Reprise by Navy Blue. Uh, I slept on this album when it first came out. Listened to it again. It was so good that I had to make another video talking about how great this album is. And uh, tracks like My Whole Life, you know, Peach Cobbler, um, HGTV, as well as oh, Ritual. Ridiculous. This album is very wholesome, you know, reflective, you know, talks about his family and his and his, and his roots and whatnot. And his, his writing, I think... Navy Navy Blue might be one of, if not my favorite, like writer in hip hop, man. Like this this man's writing is ridiculous, and uh, yet again proves it. Like last year he had a top two album, this year he has a you know top six, but it could be really top four. The the potential is crazy. I am excited to see what he's going to come out with next. So uh, at number five we have Call Me If You Get Lost by Tyler the Creator. Tyler comes back after the more poppy album in Igor to a more hardcore hip-hop album in Call Me If You Get Lost. It's a very, very great project, man. Uh, tracks like Lumberjack, um, Corso, you know, Sir Baudelaire. Obviously Sweet, one of his best tracks ever. Like, it's ridiculous. It's phenomenal. And uh, yeah, this with this album, Tyler easily has one of the best runs in hip-hop. Um, and uh, yeah, man, I can't wait to see where this man goes in 2023. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it, but this album right here, I'm, I'm going to be bumping this shit for until that next album comes, because this, this, this album is just so fun. It came out at a perfect time, for sure, so, uh, yeah. I also want to mention the aesthetic he always brings every single time. It's so creative, and I can't wait to see what, what new aesthetic or character he's going to build in the next album. At number four, we have Sometimes I Might Be Introvert by Little Sims. And man, Little Sims, uh, her potential was crazy, but this is easily her best album by far. This is her. This th this is literally her. Everything about her, what she what she, you know, loves, what 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 she's passionate about. This is this is literally her as an album. Very many themes of her roots as well as, you know, being a woman, a black woman in society. Uh this is just you know, her voice is definitely needed, and I think she presented and displayed everything that she talked about on here damn near perfectly. Production-wise, oh, the production on here was pristine, you know? the, the In my first reaction, I, th I said the skits kind of ran it down. I kind of retract that statement now, knowing uh, now that I listen to this more, it definitely helped build the world even more that she was going for. So yeah, this was, this was great. Uh, definitely her best album. I think is, I feel like she can do even better than this. That's the crazy part too. At number three, we have By the Time I Get to Phoenix by Injury Reserve. Man, I feel like if I listened to this album more, it might have been my album of the year, but I didn't just for the pure fact that I have to be in the mood to listen to this album because this album is very, very heart-wrenching. Literally a eulogy to, you know, the fallen brother Grogs. Uh, rest in peace, Grogs, by the way. But this album is very, very groundbreaking in the sound. Probably this is the most innovative album of 2021. You know, the production, literally ridiculous. The soundscapes are crazy. And uh, the lyricism is so emotional and touching that, like, it's it, it's undeniable how great this project is. And, you know, if this is people's album of the year, 
I respect it 100% because for for quite a while this was my album of the year crazy crazy album tracks like knees and Superman that <sighs> ridiculous um so yeah top to bottom there's not that much things that I can say that are like negative about this project in general this is just a very 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 dope product now we're at the number two position and people can probably see where i'm gonna go with this yeah and number two we have donda by kanye west kanye after dropping a dud of an album which, which was jesus is king he comes back with one of the craziest rollouts of all time and then drops this masterpiece kanye man what can i say how you how you go from jail to off the grid is crazy to me but uh it worked it was amazing at when the deluxe came out this definitely solidified yeah, this is easily top two project for me, especially tracks like Life of the Party with Andre 3000. That is literally song of the year to me. Donda is one of Kanye's best projects by far, it is a perfect representation of where he is now. And I just like how he had so much more depth than he did on Jesus is King. You know, talking about though he has gone through all these trials and tribulations, you know, even with the grievance of his mother, even though this is kind of like a love letter to his mother, he is still praising God and thanking him for this life he has. So, yes, this project is great. I love it. Top three to four Kanye project, for sure. So, uh, yeah. So now we're at the album of the year. And to be honest, this wasn't too tough for me because ever since this album dropped, I literally have played this album every single day. Like an unhealthy amount. As soon as I finished my reaction, I bought it off Bandcamp because obviously the Bandcamp version or the YouTube version or the offline version is the best part. So I'm just going to cut to the chase. Yeah, LP by JPEG Mafia is the album of the year. And, uh, you know, JPEG Mafia is definitely one of my favorite artists, but I feel like this album is a new beginning for him. You know, this album seemed like he, he had something to get off his chest. He was very, you know, angry and bitter about, you know, things that were going on in the world as well in his personal life with his with label issues as well by the end of this album you feel the weight just coming off his shoulders and you know now he's off a label and the rap game should be scared because <laughs> now that this man is free he's about to go crazy so um yeah this album is ridiculous uh this album three album run from peggy is i would say this is one of the greatest three album runs ever how innovative he is with his sounds and how versatile he is he can sing he can he can wrap his ass off it's ridiculous man jpeg mafia has be has the potential to be i mean he already is a goat but to be one of the goats definitely it's definitely crazy to see um so yeah that is my album of the year lp by jpeg mafia so this year has been great for music crazy crazy year definitely we're in a golden age of uh, classics that have dropped I truly feel like the top 10 at the very least have classic potential I feel like so we're definitely in a golden age of you know classics and you know since this is the start of a new era I get more and more as time goes on but me I feel like I, I just feel so like you know honored to just like l listen to these and like experience them when they first drop and seeing my first reaction to him whenever I want is just it's just dope so yeah and thank you all for watching the videos this year absolutely crazy you know what I'm saying I cannot do this without any of all, any of you all and uh, you know this is just a start 2022 we're going absolutely crazy I'm not holding back we're actually listen we were we we did reviews to like 55 albums this year and we're, we're gonna do even more we're gonna listen i took a two month break this year that's not happening next year i'll tell you that much uh we going crazy we're going dumb you're just gonna have to wait until next year to see uh some of the crazy announcements i have but yeah this is my list let me know your guys's list in the comments below like subscribe for more bell icon for notifications and uh yeah classic month from january 2022 literally in two weeks the first classic album reaction for classic month will be dropped so uh yeah uh anyways i'm just prolonging this for no reason see y'all in the next one <laughs>